Right, right. So the question yeah. would be this: Who would have access to the knowledge if Muhammad was illiterate or not? Who would have that access? Who would know that? Well, the people around him. Right. Would yeah. people in Persia know it? We have many statements, many recordings of what happened at the time of the Prophet that are what we would call embarrassing or negative things that don't necessarily serve a purpose but have been recorded anyway. So an example would be we, we have a recording of a, a manuscript of the Quran or a page of the Quran being eaten by a goat, for example. Can I address that? Sure. First off, I don't think there's any evidence the universe had a beginning. I don't know. What there is evidence for is that there was a Big Bang. No, I didn't say that. It might have always existed or it might not have, we don't know. You don't There's no firm evidence that it had a beginning. Alright. So you don't know. So if someone right. to believe it had a beginning, yes. It's fine. Do you believe the universe has always existed? I don't know. No, 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 no. No. I, I believe I, I don't know. So what I'm what I'm hearing, and I could be misrepresenting you, sure. so tell me if I am, is that yeah. we've got no idea about the beginning of the universe. Exactly, exactly. So you so reject, therefore, so you reject the theory of relativity. I'm no, sure I that. don't know. You're treat treat point of purpose. You're trying to understand. Words. Why don't you learn something? Yeah, the man right. is an expert. Right. You are not. Right. 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 I'm not saying anything. Okay. Said I don't know. So what what I've understood is that the more that you the more that you're learning, the less that you know. When did time begin? Well, we don't know. Oh it may God. have never begun. You it may have always been there. Disrespectful. You don't really know a lot, do you? These are side, these are side topics. Uh, these are really side topics, I think. Yeah, these, these are side topics. I'm, I'm, yeah, I agree. I agree. What's your name? Sorry, Im Imran. Imran. Yeah. I think we, we, it would be good if Imran and I could focus we'll, we'll on, on the, we'll on the issue at hand because these are side topics and it's easy to get. But I want to just address a couple, couple of things because I think we're having a. a, a just want to reasonable. say a couple of things because I think Go ahead, yeah. I understand why the brothers are sort of all joining in yes, because they're, sure, they're feeling sure. a little bit buttons pushed. Yes. And I, and I, and I want to say that. Um, even if you don't have the, and I completely agree with the brother's position about language and context yes. and yes. commentary, but even if you don't have the commentary, the verse that you quoted about kill the unbelievers yeah. where you find them, if you start from what it talks about, yeah. it's actually talking about a specific treaty, treaty with a specific group of people okay. that was broken yeah. and therefore, and it's nothing to do with religion. So this is not a, so you can't actually, compare. Actually, polytheists, not not. Uh, sure, the mushriks, yeah, the, 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 the polytheists. Yeah. And so this was related to that specific treaty and the command to okay. fight them was after, the, after that treaty was okay. violated okay. and that's irrespective of religion really it's not religion, it's right. not to do about whether they believe as Muslims right. or not so and the idea so I don't find those two verses contradictory but we would we would I was just talking about humans you know how the fact that in a history most yeah. of us have been as human beings we've been theistic yes and I agree and, with that and then yes. we become not necessarily monotheist sure and no, uh, sure so there's been a concept yeah. of something beyond yes. human yes. beings yes. that yes. has translated into sort of uh, yeah, you know, time. human beings sort yeah. of experience yeah. Yeah. and there's been claims from many different societies many different cultures in many different times of people who've had communication yes. and then afforded that yes. Yes. yes yes now this is a trend that's gone on and it's sort yes. of a uh, few you know people even today make the claim yes but what they, what this shows actually is that we need to account for this experience. I agree. So this I is agree. an observation I agree. of something. I agree. Now, th so dismissing this concept, I think, out of hand that these texts are, is, is problematic. I think yeah. we should assess them and look at them and see what we come out sure. with. Sure, sure. And one of the things that you said about the Quran specifically was you said that it was written by men. And it's a common you know, accusation that made against the, the Prophet that this was yeah. something that compiled together. Yeah. But actually, I think histor historically, it, it goes against, the, there's history goes, that goes against that idea. And the main reason is actually that because the Quran itself asks people to write something like it. And if, forget, forget the challenge itself, but yeah. just look at what happened historically. All it would require was for somebody of that time to say, well, here we go, this is something like it. And it would have ended the religion, completely finished it. Would it? It would have completely finished it. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't accept that. Sure, I understand that. I don't accept that. Sure, I completely. I understand people, what people, first off, people don't change their religious beliefs in the face of contradictory evidence. We see that, people that join doomsday cults, and they predict the end of the world, they give it a certain date. Yeah? And when that date happens and the world doesn't end, do you know what happens? They carry so they, on. Yeah, they yeah. don't sure. say, ah, oh, I was wrong. My, my belief in my uh, cult figure is ended. They come up with some rationalization why they were right all along. Yeah? So I just don't agree 
that, uh, that that claim is valid because people don't change their beliefs based off of conflicting evidence. So then, what their we belief systems sure. are much more complicated. So, but than that. so what what that answer that you've given assumes yeah. is that there, there is evidence of people producing something similar. I'm saying is if, if there was, it wouldn't change their beliefs. So sure. I don't believe that the religion would end if someone came up with that. So in the time when it was when Islam was sort of yeah. literally in its fruition, there were handfuls of people who were receiving these words from the, the Prophet yeah. that they recognised as being something different from their usual sort of way of speaking and doing poetry, etc. Yeah. At that, that time, yeah. when I think that there would have been, because we have pe examples of people at that time walking away from the religion, we have examples of that. So I agree with you, as a, as a group, most people tend to sort of blindly follow, yes. but actually there are many that don't. Sure. Um, and I, you know, I have friends who are examples of that, sort of coming from atheistic backgrounds or religious backgrounds and changing religions or, sure. or leaving religions. Yeah, people yeah. go sure. both ways. Both sure. ways, yeah. yeah. So I think that historically, because that, rather than try to meet this challenge, the, pe the people actually fought the Prophet. They drove him out of where he was yeah. and they went on to have many battles and... and right. You know, right. I, 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 I think historically though, what that shows is that what he, what he had wasn't something that would, could easily be reproduced. That's my perspective. That's anyway. fine. Something not easily reproduced is fine. Sure. He could have been a brilliant poet, speaker. None of that uh, means that sure. there's, uh, sure. it was given those texts by a being that's all powerful or sure. righteous. He could have been given it by an alien for all I know. You know? <laughs> it doesn't so, follow that, 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 that the fact that it was... Um, somewhat unique does, doesn't mean that it's from a, a god sure. that has all those properties. So absolutely. So what it, I agree I agree what, what, what you're saying, but I, I, what, I, what I would say is that the, the, the fact that the Quran was something that wasn't easily reproduced by the people at the time, so I'll just use that phraseology just to make life easy. Fine. And the people fought the Prophet rather than to try and meet this challenge, they fought against him. And what this for me, what this shows actually is they were unable to meet that challenge for me when I'm looking at this. And the fact that this text itself makes certain claims for itself. One of the claims it makes is about the Prophet, peace upon him anyway, it says that he was illiterate. Which is which is actually something that is, you know, historically sort of recorded and valid as far as we're is aware. I, 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 I mean, I've tried to look into that. Have I you? can't say I'm an expert on this, but I haven't found that there's the, the, the historical validation of that claim that Muhammad was illiterate well, is very strong. I mean, tell me what you think the best evidence is that that claim is true, because I... From the reading I've done, I've not seen anything particularly convincing. So how, how would you approach that sort of question? I would look I would look for historical biographies of him done by non clearly non-biased sources. And I I don't I don't see that. Go ahead, you want to say something? Can I just wait? Yeah, of course. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, by so the way, six thirty is when I have to go. Okay, okay. same way for you. Yeah, okay. okay. right. You you, like, you seem a little bit similar. Yeah, That's by the way. Fine. So this how the companions of the prophet. For example, if all of you guys know me. Yeah. And I tell you that I'm the prophet. Yeah. yeah. And I tell you that, for example, you clearly know that yeah. I know how to write. You know how to write. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was everything. the point I was going to make. Yeah. yeah. Would you risk your life in all these battles where you're the underdogs? Would you actually right. risk your physical life and yeah. everything based on that whimsy claim? A claim that you know, you know is false. Yeah. Oh, I think you you could claim. I, I I totally believe that you could risk your life or something that you know to be false. I don't think it's unlikely at all. You it's might believe if you do it all the time. if you believe it the that it's going to lead to a better world, you will certainly risk your life for a lie. I don't see why you wouldn't. All that's all it requires. All it requires is some ideological uh, motivation to fight for that cause. You might fight for that cause because they're paying you. You might fight for the cause because you think that this person is an inspiration, or you might fight for the cause because you think it will lead to a better world. Well, well, and, and, and you'll quite happily fight for a lie if you think. Like, like people, people do it, people all, the do it all the time. Proper people, ideologists like Nazism and Communism, they, they've done things, they know are lies, but they believe in their ideology and they fight. Yeah, they I'm, risk their lives for their the ideology. The thing. So I don't see why that's an argument. The thing. And on mass as well. But so like you said, most you of the said people not, thought you said, Muhammad okay, okay, probably so didn't know him personally. Then, then said probably only he had a small is. circle. Of he people said that earlier. Phil is it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Phil. Phil said earlier that you would need it from non-biased. But I, I would, I would humbly claim no one's non-biased. Yeah. Like for example, a Christian is not yeah. going to be non-biased. Well, that's uh, a difficulty yeah, in, in believing the claim. Be I'm but, not going to lie to you. A Muslim no, but there be are, there are. Okay. But atheist is not going to be non-biased. So who's going to be non-biased? You, because look, if no, I'm not okay, Muslim, if you, okay, okay, okay. If, for example, <laughs> if, for example, 
They, who's, who's no, no, no you can, you can. For, uh, let me explain, right? Let's, there are certain claims, right, that are accepted in a conflict by both sides. Okay? So, for example, um, take World War II. Okay? Both, both sides of World War II, the Allies and the Axis, accept the claim that the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Where they would disagree is whether it was justifiable. But they both agree that Pearl Harbor was bombed. Right? So if you have a scenario like that, where multiple sides in a conflict agree on certain facts, then that gives you a validation that those facts are likely to be true. So what you would want to see is contemporary people who were not followers of Muhammad, maybe his opponents, who agree, who agreed with that claim. And I haven't seen that. I mean, if you if you know of that, I'd be happy to read it and examine it. From what I've read, I've not seen that. Then you have. Do you? I, so, sorry, go on. Yeah. So there were. So we have. We have historical. So when I, when I say when you're assessing any sort of historical events, yeah, particularly about a civilization, yeah, and you got to remember that Arabia was in between the Romans and the Persians, yes, and didn't really have a written history or any sort of written uh, system as such uh, that was sort of books. Well, they had text. writing. They had writing, but I they mean, didn't so have. I'm a, not quite sure what you sure, mean. They have no writing. They didn't. System. They didn't record their history as such. Um, and actually, that's something that happened even after the, right. the Prophet's time, when actually the Quran came, and that was something as a, of a driver of writing and recording and books really became proliferant after that. So, when you're assessing history, yeah. actually, what we do is we go to those people yeah. and we see what they say. Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. And then you look for if you're going to if you're going then going to change, revise that understanding of what these people were like from their own history right. you look for evidence that contradicts this from other sources yeah so we have in the muslim recorded history yeah. which you could say is biased but we have right. we have recording of um, companions who were doing the writing for the prophet because he couldn't do it we have example for example there was a, a treaty being written and between a, dis a disbelieving group and the prophet is upon him and the person who was writing the, the the treaty put down this is this is the treaty between the prophet, the messenger of God, and you know, yeah. and the person objected and said, no, well, actually, I don't believe that this person is a prophet of God, so I'm not going to agree to this treaty. So we have recording of the but prophet. Do we have recordings by the opposing side? So the, the person who who then later became Muslim affirms the story, but at the but time he, he was later became a Muslim. Later became Muslim. So that's not sure. really so an unbiased no, source. No, no I'm not saying it's not, I'm not saying unbiased okay. source. Do we what, have an unbiased no, source? So what I'm saying is that. When you yeah. do history, yeah. when you do history, yeah. you don't go to first. You look at the people's history that they record for themselves. Sure. And then, if you have, then what you do is, if you want to revise your theory, if you want to say actually, however these people have recorded their own history isn't correct, because we have other evidence well, that suggests, then you would revise no, your no, theory. No, no, no. But we have to treat, we have to treat claims skeptically. Yeah. Otherwise, we fall for anything. But, but we don't. Okay? We, and it seems to me that this claim is not being treated as skeptically well, as it should be. Well, the, 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 prophet, the, the claim is that the prophet was illiterate. You don't believe the prophet was illiterate? I'm not saying I don't believe... Well, I, I'm saying I, I haven't seen sufficiently unbiased sources so to don't verify know. that claim. So you don't know? So, so I don't accept it. I'm not saying it's false. It might be true, right? But I don't accept it as true. So you basically... Just, you don't accept anything unless you've what? Seen it yourself? What? No, no, of course not. I accept it based off... I, I accept claims based on the proportion of the evidence for do you have any evidence that says he wasn't illiterate? No. So why would you oppose him? But because you don't why did accept it, why things. Did it, why did you don't. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't have any evidence that there are no aliens on Mars. But I don't you accept. Don't, I would, if someone here said there are aliens on Mars, right. I would not accept that claim, even though it might be true. Right. Right. Even though, and I don't have any contrary evidence that right. it's false. Right. I, unless you can bring the evidence to the table, I, I'm saying? not going to accept. So that if someone claim. makes a claim there's aliens on Mars, would yeah. you say there's not aliens on Mars? No, I don't make that claim. You I say you don't believe it. I say uh, yes. All I right. don't accept the claim to be true. That's, you don't believe it. It's the same thing. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah fine. Because you have no yeah. evidence. But it's not the same as me saying it's false. No, no. I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying yeah. is this: so someone comes and claims there's aliens on Mars. Yeah. You have got no authority to say there is no aliens on Mars unless you can prove there's no aliens on Mars. Correct. All you can say is I don't believe it. Yeah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. So when uh, the Muslim comes and says that we believe the Prophet Muhammad was illiterate yeah. due to what we have, yeah, yeah, you have to question why you don't believe that. Yeah, because I haven't. I told you why. No, no. Why don't you believe that? Why I, don't you believe their testimony? I told you already. Why? Because they're not unbiased sources. No, no, no. But why? So what? 
because that's what you want in a history. So when we, this no, is no, what no, I'm saying no, to you. No, so no, if you don't that want approach to history. Is, exactly what you yeah, yeah. explain to you. If you have a contrary to it, you're right. So if, for example, you have um, Islamic sources saying Muhammad was illiterate, yeah. and then you have pagan sources saying no, he was he was writing books. He was a poet. Yeah. We're not. No, no we, listen, okay, listen, okay. listen to yeah. me. What you're saying is someone's come with a claim that he was illiterate, and here's why we're saying he's illiterate. Now, do you understand what a belief is, yeah? A belief is the acceptance of something to be true with or without evidence, okay? This is what a belief is. All right. Sure. So we believe Muhammad Sallallahu was illiterate, yeah. and the reason we believe it is this, this, and this. Yeah. You have to prove, that even if it's biased, even if it's written by the people who wrote the history because they were there, listen, they were there. Why are you rejecting that just because okay, it goes no. against you? No, 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 it's not just because it goes against me. You can't accept any claim made by people just because they were there. Right? Oh, oh, okay, okay, I'll okay. Give you, okay. Give you. People lie, people make mistakes. And, you people, tell, and people tell the truth. Yes. Right. So you don't know a priori which one of those three is the case. No, no, but the question. Right? Yeah, but so, the question. So the you question. want to try and assess okay, okay. which one of those is true. Is it so how would you do that? What's that okay. Here, okay, how do you do that? Yeah. If you want to know whether a claim it's true. It's true in history. Yeah. You look for multiple sources. Right. And right. you look to Agreed. see are there clear biases Agreed. on the sources. Right. No. And if there are clear biases on the source, you raise your level of skepticism. Right, right. So the question yeah. would be this who would have access to the knowledge if Muhammad was illiterate or not? Who would have that access? Who would know that? Well the people around him. Right. Would yeah. people in Persia know it? I don't know. It depends well, what they? actions they had. Well if they never met him, would they would well, they if they hadn't met him? Right. They wouldn't know. And would people in Rome know it? And Egypt? Right, right. No, of course. So the, the people you would expect to tell you about how he was are the people yeah. around him. Right, but they're also the people... But what you're trying to say is they lied. Right. No, I'm not you saying are. they lied. They could be mistaken. It could be a legend made up later. Right. I'm not saying the people around yeah. him Or they told the truth. There are, or, that's a possibility as well. Right, right. right. Now, the question is... Hang hey, 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 let me make address this point. Go on. There, there's, no, there's no assessment that they necessarily lied. The people come to false beliefs by all kinds of manners. Right. It could be legends that developed over time, it could be mistakes, it could be exaggerations, it could be mistranslations, it could be an outright lie. Right. right? Or it could be the truth. Right. Okay? Now, if we only have the biased sources, the ones that you would expect to try and paint someone... Why is it biased? Okay, because in history, if you have a claim from someone who's clearly biased, then you have to treat that claim with more scepticism than someone that doesn't have but a clear everyone's bias. everyone's biased, though. No, no, no. But as I said, sometimes the bias doesn't matter. Yes. Okay? So, for example, if in the case of World War II, yeah. right, if yeah. both sides yeah. agreed to certain things... Yeah, but you're not a presenter. Then, so that's a, okay. No, 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 no. Because yeah. you presented Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And the Allies believe this and the Axis believe this. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. you're not doing the same with this. You're not bringing us an alternative oh. view. Oh, yeah, true. No, no, I, I, okay. Didn't nobody, do, didn't nobody write no, but against? Didn't you just tell me that writing wasn't very active in that period of time? Right. Okay. But so therefore, it's very see. difficult. No, the problem is it's very difficult right. to test this claim whether it's really true. Right. I'm not saying I've got lots of evidence that it's right, false. Right. Right. I'm not saying that. Right. So you're saying, well, bring me some evidence that it's no, false. No, no, no. And I don't have it. No, no, no. But I'm saying is, is that Sorry. it would be very, it's hard to assess whether the claim is really true. Can I because, you? as you said, there wasn't a lot of writing okay, going well, on at this Can I ask you a quick question? Right? Earlier, when you were talking about, for example, um, aliens being on Mars or something like that, yes. and you said I mean, if, I mean, someone, if someone made that claim, you wouldn't. But well, what I would say the difference between that and this claim is, for example, great claims like something so crazy yeah of course you're not going to accept by someone just saying it yeah but the prophet when most people back then were illiterate being illiterate that's not a crazy claim so what you yeah, were you, obviously you some people were literate because so it got written so down right for example what you did for example is like yeah. if you tell me if, if i didn't know this area and you said edge roads that way that's not like a massive claim. That wouldn't yeah. be a claim that would really okay, fine. shake everything, uh, right? Of course. But what he did, yeah, instead yeah, of doing yeah, that, right. he was... No, no, of course. But no, like but the claim is... Yeah. The cl look, let's get down to the, the no, no, bottom no, line of this. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Let me get to the bottom line of this. It's a basic claim. It wasn't no, a no, no, claim. fine. No, it's, not. But the it's not, because what you're saying is that a literary masterpiece was written by an illiterate person. So that's not what we're saying, actually. No, Phil, no, no. We're not saying that at all. 
What, what with? That's a subtle point. Sorry, Imran, sorry, no, 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 no. sorry, hang on, sorry. Okay. Can I what, just, me and Imran were having this so, chat. What was yeah. the claim you, so, maybe I misunderstood sure. the claim you made. So Why don't you repeat well, the claim sure. so, and we go for this. I said that you said that <laughs> the, the, the Muhammad, Muhammad or a group of people wrote the Quran. Yeah. That's your claim? That was, your, that was how you, and I said I didn't agree with that. And I said I was giving different reasons for that. Right. Now amongst the reasons was that the Prophet was illiterate. And then we went into the question of history right. and how, how we do history. Right. So. In talk, talk about early sources, we have you know first century Qurans that contain the statement that this was if you were not if you were one who could write with your hand, then the people would not have believed. This is sort of a quote from the uh, Quran itself. And it, when the Quran was in its fruition, literally when there were handfuls of Muslims only. And I know that you said that people believe things blindly, but when the but the, the people who were coming to believe in this gentleman in a time when he was saying things against their culture, their belief systems, where people who were looking for reasons to sort of say this is a false person, don't believe in him, because of partly because of sort of clan rivals of reason and everything else, there were people who said, you know, we did this and that clan did this, and now they're saying they've got a prophet, why can't we say the same? These were the sorts of thought processes going on. No one refuted the, client, the, the fact that he was illiterate or said, actually, well, no, you're you, not illiterate. You, you don't know that no one refuted that. We, That's a claim you've made. No, we do. There could have been no, plenty no. of people refusing no, no. that, and so they are doing some silence. No, 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 and, and what I mean by that is, we have many statements, many recordings of what happened at the time of the Prophet that are what we would call embarrassing or negative things that don't necessarily serve a purpose but have been recorded anyway. So an example would be we, we have a recording of a, a manuscript of the Quran or a page of the Quran being eaten by a goat, for example. It has no real significance overall because the Quran was a memorized text, but it's recorded. So we have not a lot of, unquoting sort of inverted commas, banality recorded. Recorded. And then we have extensive uh, life stories of the Prophet, peace upon him, what happened to him also recorded. And they record all the things that happened, the accusations that were made against him. And the Quran also reiterates some of these, that it, it, it claims that this person was doing these sorts of things. None of them, none of those, amongst those claims, does it claim that this was someone actually who was lying, who was a writer who was lying that he couldn't write. So it's a, it's a claim, it was something that we'd expect to find, in, okay, it, but we don't find okay. it. Here's, here's the point. They may have some conception of the story they want to tell, okay? And, I mean, I'm not saying this is what happened, I don't know, right? But it's certainly conceivable, right, that they had this conception of this image that they wanted to portray, and it suited them. Right? And other things, embarrassing things, they didn't find them to be a serious problem. Otherwise, they would have cut them out. They said, oh, we can allow this, but we can't allow this. Perfectly, that's certainly more conceivable that, than an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, oh, not all-loving, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, although the 99 properties of God gave someone a, so you can, you a, can a take, supernatural sure, book. Sure. So, so though, if you ask the probability of those two explanations, to me, the human one is a much more reasonable sure. one. Because I understand. We've only got 15 minutes left. Sure, sure, sure. So why don't we do one of these two things? What, you, the very first thing that you said was, I believe there's a creator. Mm. So why don't we, do, in our last 15 minutes, maybe we go two minutes each or something, just give me the, 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 the best reason you think there is for believing that there is a creator to the universe. Okay, okay so that's a, co a complicated question, but I'll do my best in, sure. the, in the short I mean, time. I just think we've only got 15 sure. minutes left. Let's, uh, so, let's move. So I, I believe that the, the universe, if you, I mean, you're the science guy, I'm not very really, as a science okay. as you, but evidence points towards the fact that the universe, if you go back in time, was smaller than it is now, so it's contracting back over time. And this goes to some point that where we lose sort of uh, our current understanding of physics, which is you know, plank, pre-plank yes. time. Yes, sure. Sure. Um, and I believe that because we look at the universe now and it's expanding f at a faster and faster rate, yes. that it's unlikely that it's going to be a universe that collapses. So it's going to be going on yeah. for that. And yeah. we're, if we look up now, we can see stars. Yes. Okay. That means that we haven't been expanding forever because otherwise the light wouldn't come back to come to our eyes because it would be the acceleration would also mean that we're at a, a stage where the light wouldn't come to us so we just see a black sky uh, that's not quite right okay that's that, that's, right. that's anyway, my understanding yeah. so you're, what, you're giving the um 
old bears paradox. So. Sure, sure. But that doesn't work in an expanding universe. Okay. So old bears paradox. Okay. Well. So because of all of these sort of things, I believe the origin has a, the universe has an origin point. Okay. I believe that there was a circumstance, there was an occasion or a circumstance in which there was no universe. Right. So I don't believe the universe has yeah. always been there. Right. And I don't believe in infinite regression. You've, you've probably come okay. across this before. Therefore, there has to be a initiating cause, an uncaused cause, for example. Mm -hmm. If we do a conceptual analysis of that cause, yeah. um, if it's a, if it's something that's already existed for yeah. eternity, it can't be mechanistic because then we would have lots of, yeah. sort of universes popping out all over the place, even interlap overlapping with ours. Maybe we don't see why that wouldn't be the case. Um, it would require. It would be so. It would be a non-mechanistic thing that would indicate some sort of choice to make a decision to call the universe okay. so therefore would have a will right. and therefore and also then to make the universe it would have to have at least an equal amount of power or matter or energy as the universe itself yeah. cause and effect if we say is conserved let's say conservation of right. energy so a powerful indiv uh, thing that is not the universe right. so it isn't matter and okay. energy that has enough energy as the so universe the itself. Argument. Sim similar to the Kalam okay. argument. All right, so let me try and address that. Sure. First off, I don't think there's any evidence the universe had a beginning. I don't what there is evidence for is that there was a Big Bang. Yeah. But was the Big Bang really the beginning? Well, it's certainly true that there are singularity theorems proven by Penrose and Hawking, and I've worked with Penrose and Hawking, so I know a little bit about this, um, that say the universe had a beginning at the Big Bang. But those theorems have assumptions. One assumption has already been shown to be false. And that was shown in 1998 with the acceleration of the expansion because those singularity theorems assume gravity is always attractive. Yeah. Dark energy repulsive. shows yeah. us there is repulsive gravity yeah. out yeah. there. Therefore, the assumption in the Penrose Hawking theorem has, we know to be false. Okay? So, straight away, we'd now, what we used to think the Big Bang was the beginning, now we can't say that. Also, as you kind of alluded to, our current understanding of physics breaks down at the Planck time, that's true. It doesn't follow from that the universe had a beginning. Right? No, I'm just saying. Uh, that there people have tried to construct what are called quantum theories of gravity, and there are many attempts at this string theory, loop quantum gravity, and Java gravity. What's interesting is that all of them seem to point to a pre Big Bang universe. The universe was contracting before it was expanding. Okay? And um, so that tells us we are not in a position to say the universe had a beginning. So um, that assumption of the argument doesn't seem to be correct. Well, so, you don't, to you. so you don't believe... No, not according to me, according to the scientists according like Roger Penrose, uh, Stephen Hawking and people, no, no, other no, you, scientists... So you did. don't believe the universe had a beginning? Correct. Do you believe the universe has always existed? No. No, I didn't say that. It might have always existed or it might not have, we don't know. You don't... There's no firm evidence that it had a beginning. All right. So, you don't know. So, for someone right. to believe it had a beginning... Yes. It's fine. It's their opinion. It's fine. Yes, but it's not very compelling. What Imran said was that the science was pointing in that direction. And I'm saying the science is not pointing in that direction. Um, the science is... Do you believe the universe has always existed? I don't know. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. All right, but if I the universe know. has always existed, yeah. <laughs> then you'd have reason to believe that, isn't it? I think that's what you know. No, no, what you no, believe. no, no. So no, I, I believe, I, I don't know. No, May I, I'm not asking what you know. I'm I don't have what, a belief. I'm not, well, you do. I don't. Well, you either accept something to be true or not. I don't accept, no, but that's not the same. It is. <sighs> okay, it isn't. Um, I think the universe may or may not have had a beginning. Right. So and I don't have a belief either way. I will wait to see if strong evidence comes in favouring one statement over another, then I will believe. So but to right you, now, there isn't any firm evidence either way right. because we don't have any observational evidence for anything that happens in the Planck right. era. Okay. So we don't know what happened. And, and current attempts to do quantum gravity all point to the universe existed before the Big Bang. True. But they don't don't have experimental evidence so we don't know if they are right but they are our best candidates at the moment okay so we don't know whether the universe had a beginning even if it did have a beginning causes all our experience of causes is causes happen before their effects okay so if the universe had a beginning there was no before and therefore we're not in a position to demand there must be a cause 
Okay. 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 If there was, you could have lots of. No, no, no. That's you've lots of. So sorry, Imran. Why don't you respond to those two? So you've sort of made lots of. Okay, let's go with those two. One, science doesn't really point to a beginning, and two, even if it had a beginning, we can't be confident. So, so what I'm what I'm hearing, and I could be misrepresenting you. So tell me if I am. Is that we've got no idea about the beginning of the universe? We said we have lots of sure, ideas, sure. but no firm right, evidence okay, that right, one okay. of them is right. Okay. right. We so, do have a quite a lot sure. of ideas. So you don't know. Okay. So yeah. in our, so really, you're coming from a place of a lack of lack of firm knowledge. It's yes. just these are yes. theorems that mathe mathematically work, but nothing actually empirical to sort of evidence. Yes. Anything. Yeah. Okay. So that's so that's one. So. S saying that we don't know, I don't think yeah. is I, I don't think is a good argument against the uh, understanding that actually that everything points towards some sort of beginning, some sort of start. But what is pointing to a beginning? I don't, in, in, at least scientifically, what? So, so the, the, the fact that the universe contracts to an origin point. Well, it contra know? contracts to a very dense point. Yeah. But that's Infinite. not an origin point necessarily. It's so only an origin point if you believe a singularity theorem. But as I've said, those singularity theorems, none of the people that wrote those theorems down, Penrose or believe the assumptions of those theories anymore. They don't apply to the so universe when I as we observe it. So atheists shouldn't bring up a singularity, is that what you're saying? Correct. So atheists, just so you know, there's no singularity. Okay, carry on. <laughs> it's not that there's no singularity. You believe there's not? No, I don't say that. Pete, stop putting words into oh, my so mouth. What you I don't say there's no singularity. I'm saying the theorems that say there was a singularity are not reliable. They are good pieces of mathematics. They, the, the conclusion follows from the assumptions, but the assumptions are now no, no longer firm, but because, okay. particularly because we found this repulsive gravity. But even if you forget that assumption, there's an, another assumption that we believe that general relativity describes the universe in the Planck era. And, and that's uh, completely unreasonable because quantum effects are bound to take a, a, a so, role in the Planck era. So do you reject and general a, relativity as well? I don't reject it from the most part, but I do reject it as a description of a quantum era. No, and, no one, are, and no one in cosmology... They're opposing, they're opposing they're, each other. Exactly, right? exactly. So you, so, reject, therefore, so you reject the theory of relativity? I'm no, sure I don't know. You're trying to put words... Why don't you learn something? Yeah, the man right. is an expert. Right. You are not. Right. Listen right. to what he's right. 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 not saying anything. He's okay. saying, I don't know. Okay. You hear what you want to hear, I'm, as usual. Stop usually. putting words into my mouth. I don't reject general relativity. General relativity is an incredibly accurate, brilliant theory, but it is not necessarily applicable in the planet. Right. Right. Therefore, my question to you is, I think your statement that everything's pointing to an origin point, I don't accept that. So what, what I've understood is that the more that, you're, the more that you're learning, the less that you know. That's really what I'm hearing. I'm not hearing anything more than that. And I'm saying that's an unreasonable position to be in right. as human beings, because we are, we are rational and we do yeah. apply our rationale to even things that are not empirically observable. We, we yeah. do this all the time. Yeah. So, for me, let's 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 say intuitively, I think that the universe couldn't have just been uh, around forever because of the many things that I've mentioned before. But also intuitively, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. okay. And w when I then look at w within the universe, see, there's another point that you mentioned that I've forgotten now that I'll probably come back to. So there were two points. Yeah. One is science doesn't really point to the Big Bang being the beginning. I don't, I, I wouldn't agree that it's. Um, the more we know, the less we know. We've learned a lot. We've learned there was a Big Bang. We didn't know that, right? But what we now think is that the Big Bang was not necessarily the beginning. Okay, that, that's, that conclusion is no longer the consensus view in cosmology today. Okay. okay? So, and the other point was, but even there if there a, was a... Sure. Okay, go so no, no, question, so what was the other point? Was the, what was the other point? The other point was, even if there was a beginning, causality happens, things that have causes that we understand have prime moments in time. We've never seen a cause that didn't have a prime moment in time. Sure. So if there was a beginning to the universe, there wasn't a prime moment in time. So we don't really know what causality would even or we don't understand like. it. Sure. So what yeah. I would say to that, it was, um, well, when I used my words, I was quite specific. I said there was a, a circumstance in which there was no universe. Okay, so sure. I was trying to avoid time okay. language, okay. because I understand what you mean. But time is a property of the universe. So. Sure, of the universe. Sure. But uh, there was a, uh, what I was saying, there was a circumstance in which there was no universe, okay. so that would mean okay. before time and before space, and I think that, and therefore, so whatever whatever caused that universe, it's the, the causal mechanism is beyond our understanding of causality as we know. Okay. But it originated the universe, and therefore we right. have what we have now. Right. Now, the other th the, that's so that's one one concept. So I, I believe that the universe did have a beginning, even though all of these theories are sort of being put forward as muddying the waters until we have more firm understanding. Okay. 
And Can I, I ask, do you accept my point that the science isn't really pointing out? Sure. Do I have, you do accept sure. Okay, my, my, but my view on science okay. is probably slightly different to yours. Go ahead. The underlying basis of science is that there are no non-natural causes, so it precludes anything, any, any hypothesis or theories that go beyond the nature itself. So it's sort of self-limiting in its conclusions, and that's probably, a, you know, from a theistic perspective, a downfall. So, th th with that understanding, I, I know why, they, why you say what you say, because that's the limiter that's been put on you, that you have to find a natural cause. And which is why we're going to sort of going to go around in circles a little bit. We're not going to get to the nub of this because right. we're, we're, I'm positing a supernatural cause, yeah. and that doesn't fit into science model. So it's right. we're not going to agree. There's no that's too big a bigger bridge to sort of gap. Okay. The other thing that I see actually is just just to what we see sort of in in the universe itself, sort of the organisation. I know these are sort of you understand this. Yeah. Um, you know the argument for the fact that the fine tuning, for example, and I know that you have views on this as well. Sure. But actually, other things. For example, if you look at if you look at sort of the the how frequently mutations occur to yeah. to create to organisms or DNA yeah. to bring about uh, evolution, because yeah. I don't deny evolution exists. That just the mechanism is the issue. If you look at that, and we look at the time span in which there would have been evolving proteins on the universe. The, the, the diversity that we see is not it's not explainable in the time frame that we have okay. from my perspective okay. so that's one so yeah. I think that we have we, that we haven't got good explanations for the diversity of biological okay. matter okay. Um, looking at the time frame that we have for biology to have evolved yeah. so far the other thing that we have we have many things that are not reducible in my view so consciousness for example right. um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not reducible down to any particular okay. um, area of the brain even or even oh, I agree with you that. Know. I agree with that. And, that and I think these these when we look at the basics so of basically fine-tuning evolution consciousness and yeah oh, the, the, and rationality is an a priori assumption okay I think we can't just make that a priori assumption to then do our rationality okay, okay. we have to have to so explain that well. okay. yeah. let me try and address so those, lots those lots four of points in, in a short sure. series I mean we can do this sure, again. Sure, sure. this is a great chat sure. okay first of all fine-tuning I think fine-tuning is a very bad argument for theories and I'll try and give you a very it's a long topic we won't have time sure, to, sure. to go into too much detail first off we don't know that the universe actually is fine-tuning because there are lots of papers actually disputing this and we can't do an experiment where we change a concept of nature and see what will happen sure. we can't even predict from the constants if we if I gave you the laws of nature and the constants and I asked you to predict does our universe have life in it you would predict that it wouldn't does not because you would say the matter and the antimatter would annihilate and we would live in a cold dead sterile universe so you would get a false negative so if we get a false negative for the one universe that we can observe how confident should we be for the gazillion other universes that you could you could not observe, Positive. right? Not very confident. I'm not saying fine tuning is wrong, but I'm saying we don't really know it to be true. Okay? Second off, um, let's suppose it is true, okay? So this claim is that the eye is very unlikely. Yeah? So, if you have, so it could be, there's two, there's plenty of good uh, non theistic explanations for that. One, it might be that the constant nature is just necessary, that it couldn't be any different to what they are, therefore they are not improbable. Or it could be, if you come up with any improbability thing, it could just be you roll the dice loads of times. So we could live in a multiverse or something like that. And the multiverse is actually a prediction of inflationary cosmology. It's not an ad hoc add-on to try and deal with fine tuning. It's, it comes out of inflationary cosmology, which is our best and consensus view of how galaxies fall. So this is looks like a better explanation, okay, than a being that doesn't have a mind or a brain, you know. Uh, sorry, doesn't have a brain, a physical brain, but, but does have a mind, okay? Um, lastly, it's a bad, a bad argument for, in theism. There's a very good, uh, I recommend you read this guy. He's a, his name is Hans Halverson. He's a professor of philosophy of physics, but he's a theist. And he's going around saying, theist, please don't use the fine tuning argument. It's a bad argument for theism. And his argument is this. It's a good argument for deism. If you're a deist, yeah, yeah. you should use this argument. But theism makes the claim that God is the source of all things. Right? And, and God must have fine-tuned the universe because he wants life. He wants a life-permitting universe. So he's fine-tuned the constants to give us life. Okay? Why is that a bad argument for theism? Because under theism, God is the source of not just life, but the probability for life. That's down to God too. Now, why would he make the probability... If you think he's a life-loving being, he wants life in the universe, he could have made the probabilities for life to be high, but he's made them low. And the analogy that Hans Havelson gives is, imagine you've been kidnapped by aliens, right? 
and they make you play Russian roulette. And you play Russian roulette, you pull the trigger, and you survive. And your hypothesis is how, how was it that I survived this unlikely event is that the aliens were benevolent. They wanted you to survive, so they rigged the game to make it so that you survived. Then you look at the, the chamber. And what do you find? You find there were bullets in all of the chambers. Does that fact alone confirm the hypothesis that the aliens were benevolent? That fact alone does not confirm that. That's disconfirmation. So for theism, fine-tuning actually turns out to be a bad argument because it's predicated on the fact that there's some probability that's outside of God's control that he has to sort of compensate with his tuning. Do you see what I mean? Like if you have a radio, sure. that only a tiny dial on the, on the radio has the signal that you want, yeah, an intelligent being could fine-tune it. But only because there's all this static on the radio. Well, why is there all the static on the radio? Why don't you just make a radio where every bit gets a signal? You see what I mean? So it's a bad argument for theism, and particularly if you believe, as you said, this seems to be where the contradiction lies, that you're sort of doubting evolution can come out with a complexity. But no, if no, the, I'm not. No? Sorry, I thought that was your protein no. argument. I'm saying that oh, the... Sorry, then I misunderstood you. Sure. So, okay. you've mentioned lots of things. I haven't mentioned them because this is your time to talk. So, yeah, uh, sure. but I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't go, go into it. all go of that. But go just to sort of... The, this I'm going to try and go backwards because I'm going to yeah, forget, sure. forget the we've got to finish up soon. Yeah. So the idea that yeah. the idea that because we're in a life permitting universe, just yeah. to use that phrase, sure, sure, that this doesn't this 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 does and if we say that this was fine tuned by God, means yeah. that there were there, that there's lots of other universes where God was unable to fine tune it. Um, I don't. Th it's I don't not that he was unable to. It's that he sets the probability. Maybe a different analysis. Sorry, I shouldn't. I shouldn't do it. It's that, not that. Okay. Go ahead. He sets the probability, or sorry, he sets the probability. He sets the probability for life. Okay. Yeah. So, in this universe, the, we're, make, we're making the assumption that the life probability of life is low. Yeah, that's what the fine tuning is. Right. Sure. Um, but I think because but I think that there is life here, and there is no yeah. reason to assume that there's not life anywhere else in the universe, because actually the probability is that that's fine. it's probably quite good that there is life elsewhere. Yeah, I, I agree. So the, this this universe is a life permitting universe, and we don't. Yeah. This is a big thing to say, but we don't see any evidence for other universes. I don't agree with that. Sure. That's okay. Mathematically, I, I think there is some evidence. It's not compelling. Mm. It's not strong enough to say yes. I believe. Sure. I don't believe. Sure. But there is some evidence, and that's the evidence for inflationary cosmology. Okay. But go ahead. Sure. In the model, in the model, there is. Is that what you're saying? Um, it's, to, to explain, um, most models of inflation predict that there is a multiverse, and in, in fact, there are certain models of inflation that have what's called a flat potential. Um, and those models are favoured by the data, and Planck satellite can say flat, flat potentials for inflation are favoured by the data, and those models produce a multiverse, and I think therefore there is some evidence. It's not enough to be compelling, uh, but it is suggestive, so I would say there is some evidence, but it's not... It's not enough to be okay. sure. Yeah. As far as I, I don't as call myself a sure, believer in the multiverse. Sure. Not, I don't know enough about physics, yeah. but as far as I know, there's no empirical evidence that there is anything. But that more. is empirical evidence. You, you make maps of the cosmic microwave background. You then compare what what properties the, the CMB has compared to what models of inflation, and those models of inflation that predict a multiverse are favoured by the data. That's what Georges Staffio told me. I interviewed him. He was the guy that gave the Planck data at the ESA conference. So he was the top guy on Planck. I interviewed him and I asked him this very question. Can Planck, you know what Planck is, right? Yeah, yeah. The Planck satellite. Yeah. Um, I said, can Planck discriminate between inflationary models? He said, yes. I said, does it favor models that, favor, that are a multiverse? He says, yes, absolutely. And he even said, that's the most, our most important finding. Okay, so that's a that's a whole other can sure. of worms. That, sure. Because then okay. how, because if there are multiple universes everywhere, then obviously, if, however these are produced in whatever mechanistic way that they are produced, because it, because According to science, it would be mechanistic. Yeah, it's produced by inflation. Sure. It's then, by inflation. then the fact that we haven't collided with another universe at some point already is you know, very. I I, if you have millions and millions of these or billions of these universes, but they're in they're in space that's inflating, sure. so they're very unlikely to collide. Yeah. Um, it's possible we could have collided in yeah, our past, yeah. and we might see a bruise or something. Um, 
but there have to be, a, you know, Lots of a lot of conditions stuff. for that to happen. It has to be the rate of inflation has to be such and such. So just in the start, sorry, yeah, I'm learning. Go ahead. Here. Yeah, go ahead. You said there's billions of universes in a space outside of this universe, all inflated, and yet they're not colliding. Use that yeah. as an example to, because he said, why have we not? Uh, Collided yeah, with yeah, one, isn't it? Yeah. And you said they're all in space expanding. So it's inflating. It's inflating. not just expanding. No, inflating. So inflation means accelerated. Expansion. Inflating within what? Uh, it, it, it's it's the space itself is oh, within so something. Space itself is inflating. No, no. But if this universe is inflating, yeah. Yeah. No, ours is not It's not. Uh, what we mean by inflate, well, yeah, it's undergoing a very low power. Is inflation. our universe inflating? Expanding. Well, inf when we expanding. say inflation, okay, let's try and define our terms. Oh, let's say expanding. Let's say no, no, because these things have to be explained carefully. Uh, a, a bit. Okay. So, inflation is a period of rapid expansion, where the rate of expansion is exponential. And it doubles in size in something like 10 to the minus 37 seconds. Wow. So there's yeah. billions of these things. Okay, now what happens is, let me try and explain it. So what we think is in the early universe, there was a period of inflation. In this universe? Yes. Big Bang. Yes. Right. But this inflation, when it decays, so this infl there's a, a patch of space right. that's undergoing inflation. Right. And we do have evidence for this. Okay. And um, when this patch decays, the, it heats up the space. It, turn, it creates matter and radiation. Okay, all the matter and radiation comes from the inflating space decaying. Okay, and it decays with a half life. Like everything radioactive decays with a half life. So if you have a patch of radioactive substance, all right, let's, let's just say you're eating, uh, a good example is a cake. It's not radioactive, but the, this is the example I use at a radio show. My mum makes this amazing chocolate cake. It's really, really nice, yeah? We, she puts the cake down on the table, and about half the cake goes straight away, we all eat it, okay? Then when we go back for seconds, there's no cake left. We've eaten all the cake. So that's like radioactive decay. You go from carbon-14 to carbon-12, eventually there's no carbon-14 left. It's all carbon-12, okay? But in inflation, things are different. Why? Because the patch that hasn't decayed is undergoing exponential expansion, yeah? So the amount of stuff, the amount of inflating space is always increasing, it's never going down. So it's like when I went back for the cake, the crate grew. Therefore, how many pieces of cake am I gonna have? An infinite number I'm because of the. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, yeah, that's, fine, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. This is a tricky fine. question. So, so, Rob thinks I'm doing tricky so, stuff. I'm not. So the infl No, I know you're not. I know you're not. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm to, trying to understand. As best as I can. So, is the universe like a balloon expanding? A bit like the balloon. Right. It's not exactly the same. The analogy break. There's no interior. Like a balloon has an no, interior. Right, no, forget the interior. Balloon, I'm balloon. not interested in the yes, interior. Yes, it's a bit more like a cake being baked. Well, no, let me yeah. talk about the balloon. I like the balloon. Yeah. Okay, so the sure. balloon's expanding. Yeah. Forget what's inside it. Yeah. What's it expanding into? Um, that we don't know is a right, short don't answer. Know. But well, you're, okay, there's a couple of levels to that answer. One is it's expanding into inflating space, if inflation is true. Okay, but it does, in general relativity, it's it doesn't need to expand into something. Space in, into itself, itself has the property. No, which is fine, which yeah. is fine. But space itself has the property that it can. So where are these other universes? They're in the inflating space. They're inside the same universe? Yes. Really? Y you could... The, the term universe and whatever sort of become difficult to understand. It, it's, it's inside the inflating space. The inflating space is everything. So this multiverse, okay, okay, yeah. okay all right. So it's all inside. Wow. So this inflation is ongoing yeah, yeah. in other patches. If you think of the universe as everything that exists, our how little does patch. The, how does that work with the singularity? Just so I understand. Okay, so what happens is the singularity is a point in time where the space-time, curvature, density, pressure, right. all go to infinity. Right. And that is inevitable, assuming certain things. And one of the assumptions is that gravity is always attractive. But in inflation, like with no, dark no, no, energy, no. gravity is repulsive. No, so that would, that, now hang on, I'm, let me, I'm trying to answer the question. So that would remove the Penrose-Hawking singularity. Now there's another singularity theorem called the border guth belenkin singularity theorem, which holds even if there is repulsive gravity, yeah? However, what I've interviewed Alan, now a lot of theists have made a lot of noise about this theorem, proving the universe had a beginning. And I interviewed Alan Guth about it, and he said, no, 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 it doesn't prove that. Right. Okay, because, okay, go on. Uh, Not because you've completely confused me. What's the universe upon to you? What is the universe? Yeah. I don't, yeah. The, the phrase universe can have different meanings. What do you mean? What do you believe it is? Well, you could define it in many ways. I mean, one way to define it is, Hey, sorry, come this way, folks. Sorry. 
So one way to define it is the observable patch that we can see, and that's about oh, really? 90 billion light years. So when you when you say that, you see, you seem yeah. to believe the universe is. Well, you could define it that way. You could no, no, define no, but it that way. No, but now There's different ways of no, defining the word the universe. Because I'll be and honest with you. And things can get confusing because people use these terms differently. So, so here's, here's what I'm yeah. trying to understand now. Is, yeah. According to what you're saying, yes. the universe expanded, and if this multiverse is true, yes. these other multiverse, these other universes are expanding within this universe. Yes. Yes. If you at the same you, time. Yes. At the same well, time. Well, at the same time doesn't have a meaning in relativity because... Yeah, in relativity, in okay. there well, is no at the same time. Time is dependent on observer. And so I actually asked Alan Guth this question. He, he is the inventor of this inflationary cosmology. Didn't time begin when the universe expanded? Not necessarily, no. Time could have... That's an, if the singularity is true, yes. But the singularity may not be true. In fact, most people don't think it is true. In which case, no, time didn't begin with the universe expanding. Um, oh, it didn't? When did time begin? Well, we don't know. Oh it may have God. never begun. You it may have always been there. You don't really know, really know a lot, do you? We've learned a lot, but that opens you, new every, questions. Every question of virtually I've heard you be asked, we don't know. There are lots of things we know. The universe is expanding, right? We know there are other galaxies. We know there are black holes. The universe is expanding. Yes. Right. Yeah, it, it depends how you define expanding. Do, of do you think that the universe is, itself is quantized? Was? It's quantized or not? I think it's, it's not inevitable. But it's likely. I think it's likely to be true. Why well, interviewed Roger Penrose? He has a theory now. He came up with the singularity theorem, which they call Penrose Hawking theorems. And he now no longer thinks there is a singularity, and he doesn't even think there, that we need some that, gravity at the he origin thinks of the universe. Has, has been the reason, forever, right? like this. Um, not necessarily like this. It changes. It undergoes evolution. Was it smaller than this? Um, depends what you mean by small. Um, because you just said you just ruled out the singularity. So okay, I'm okay, okay. To okay, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. If, if something expanded, well, at what point was? How small was it? Yeah, well, that's a that's a, that's a confusion of language. When we say the universe is expanding, it has a very particular meaning, yeah. and it's not necessarily the meaning that you have in everyday yeah. language. But going back to original point. Sorry, okay, okay. Let me just ask that question about expanding. What do we mean by expanding? What we mean is the distance to distant galaxies is expanding. Okay, it doesn't mean everything is getting bigger or smaller, and the universe at the Big Bang could have been infinitely big, right? What we mean when we say the universe is getting bigger is that our observable patch of the universe is getting bigger or smaller. But the whole universe could be infinitely big, in which case it never got bigger or smaller. It's just our patch that got bigger or smaller. Does that make sense? Well, I was under the impression yeah. that the universe is everything. Exists. It depends how you define no, 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 the no, term universe. No, no, you can no, no, define no, no. it that way if you wish. Well, but, well I've realised now, maybe the problem I've had with atheists for so long yeah. is that our definitions are, are different. Yes, yes, because so you I'm, can I'm define def universe so in at least so three I'm, different I'm, ways. So I'm defining everything that exists, mm -hmm. and you're defining the universe as the patch of space we can see. Um, I'm not defining the universe that you way, are. but people can define it. Uh, what are you way. defining it as? That's what you define. I, I'm happy to go with. Do you <laughs> I don't care how you define it. No, I want to know how you define it though. I, c I can define it in different ways. Well, define it in the way you believe it. <laughs> I no, but I don't I know. know. I, honestly, all right. All right. There's different ways you can define it. You can define it as the patch of space that we can see. Is that how you right? define it? No. What do you define right. it? I don't know. I don't know what the right definition is. It's a confusing oh, word, right? Okay. Well, I'm happy to use either definition as long as you're clear as which definition you're using. To me, that's the important thing. Oh, no, so, no, no, so in the context of what you're saying, be clear about what you mean, right? So what is now? We know. So you don't know what the universe what, what, is. We then? do know that the universe. Has to be bigger than our observable. But we don't know patch. what we're talking about. Now, hang on. We, this is one thing you say we don't know a lot of stuff. One thing we do know is that the whole of space time must be bigger than our observable patch because we have made measurements of the curvature of space time and we don't find any deviation from a flat universe. Yeah. So it's either one of two things, and this must be true from the measurements that we've made. It's, it's either infinitely big or it's finitely big but way bigger than what we can see. Okay, so, so that, that would, has so, to so be that true. would rule out the definition that the universe is just the patch we can see, then isn't it? Surely, you, you can define words however you like. No, no, but you have. <laughs> Look, well, I don't think it really matters what word you use as long as you def well, know what the definition is. If I'm defining means. all of it, yeah, and you're defining a piece of it, then of course it matters. Well, if there's one, if I'm defining all of it, multiverse yeah. doesn't make sense. Unless, okay, th th these other universes are yes. outside if, of the universe. If you define universe as everything that exists, then multiverse does not make sense. Agreed. Of course it doesn't. 
agreed. But when right. you use the word multiverse, then the phrase universe isn't referring to that. People use these no, phrases well, interchangeably, no, no, and no, no. I agree they're lazy no, when no, they no, do no. so. No, 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 it doesn't work that way, because a multiverse is more than one universe. Yes. So if I believe the universe is everything we, everything that exists here, yeah. then according to this but idea... what do you mean of, by here? <laughs> you see the confusion arises well, by... I, I believe everything that exists, isn't it, yeah. as a universe. Okay. Everything, all the galaxies... Okay, okay. okay. So, universe. all right, all right. So, so if there's more than one okay. of those, if okay. there's more than one when of those... When we say multiverse... No, no, I'm just saying... What we mean, hang on... Yeah, but that's what I'm just... Sorry, Phil. So, it is Phil, isn't it? Yes. I keep calling you Phil. Yes. And your name is, sorry? Darren. Darren, yeah. So, this is how I've seen you, because when you say that, if I believe the universe is all of time and space, yes. that's the universe, yes. and you're saying that a multiverse is more than one of them, then there must be another one occupying somewhere else. Okay, okay. When we say multiverse... I know, I know now. Well, I'm okay. saying this was my understanding. Yeah, so now, okay. That, that's so, wrong. So now going that back then, wrong, so yeah. the way I've defined universe yeah. is not the same as your understanding universe, but you don't accept the definition of a patch of space, yeah? Right? What we can see. You believe the universe is bigger than that, is that right? Uh, yes. Do you believe the universe is infinite? I don't know. It no, might do be, it might not be. I don't have a firm belief. It could. It might be, it might not be, we don't know. Well, is, 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 does, it, are you on to? does it matter? I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't does think it matters if I the don't universe know. is infinite or finite? It, 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 it does, does it what? matter? But let me just try and clear up the, the issue that you raised. Okay? When we say multiverse, what I think is meant is a region of space time from a big bang. And in the inflationary cosmology, as it's currently understood, most models of inflation tell you that our Big Bang is not the only Big Bang, that there are many Big Bangs. And therefore, they each create their own sort of what we call bubble or pocket universe. With a bubble within a bubble? Yes, yes. So, so, these, so, so how many bubbles? Uh, there would can be an bubbles, infinite number Can bubbles them. occur within the bubbles? It's, yeah, it's yeah. believed that there would be an infinite number. Yes, yeah. yes. And none of them collided? Like the same. Um, OK, so remember that they're inside an inflating space. No, we're not saying none of them collided. In fact, it's inevitable. They're inside an inflating space. It, it's, it's inevitable. There will be collisions. The issue is whether but you there would There could be a universe one. inside you. Is that what you believe? Yeah. No. No? I don't say that. With that patch of space... Why can't there be a universe inflation? inside me? Uh, because because by what we mean by inside is sure. a, a region this of space-time that you're in. Sure. This would be a separate region of space-time. So the very phrase inside doesn't, count. doesn't necessarily so, 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 mean it. Oh, wow, wow, this is deep. Yeah. So what you're saying now, so this patch of space we, we're in, the time exists or not? There isn't a way to... Time, see, in relativity, there, there is something called a conformal time and a um, Lorentzian time. That These have different meanings. There are different notions of time. So, and, That's and, what you believe, mate. Well, I believe in relativity, yes. So you, um, so, so so you, you believe, can't you say believe there is time, but you can't necessarily say that one bubble being born is necessarily before or after, because space and time can translate into each other in relativity in, in non-intuitive right, so ways. This time, That's why I said we shouldn't use our intuition. So this time... This relativity is not intuitive. Yeah, so, right. so this time that exists within the patch of space that we can observe... Yes. You're saying outside of the patch of space we can observe, yeah. there's another universe... There may be. That has its there own time different universe. to this time. Yeah. 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 They're space-like really? separated. Why do you believe that? Well, that's even true within this universe. In this universe, there's no notion of, of, of uh, universal simultaneity. That, that's true. Forget the multiverse. If multiverse turns out not to be true, it's still the case that there isn't a universal time in the universe. Oh, there isn't? No. The time is observer dependent. It depends where you, how fast you're moving, depends where you are in a gravitational field. So, for example, if you're on the edge of a black hole, your time stands still. If you're going at the speed of light, your time stands still. You don't know how to So this of idea time. that the universe is 14.5 billion years old. 13. You're 13. Point yeah, you're saying this is that's wrong. for us. We measure it as 13. Do you believe that's true or not? Yes. When we say universe old, that's how much time has happened since the Big Bang. But it's that's not wrong happened. to assume that the Big Bang was necessarily the beginning. So when we say the universe is 13.8 billion years old, that's what we mean. It's how much time has elapsed since the Big Bang. And we define the Big, since bang, the Big bang. And we define the Big Bang as Isn't that the an evolution from a hot, dense state. And when did the hot, dense state come about? When inflation ended. So actually inflation happens before the Big Bang, not afterwards. So you believe time existed before the Big Bang? It may have done so, yes. Oh, that's good to hear. Yes. Did you hear that, atheists? 
Yes, there are a lot of atheists that, that make uh, completely wrong so that, allow, that does allow causality before the Big Bang? It does. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Oh, brilliant. It does. Uh, it's certainly possible the universe has always existed. Certainly, and many... Well, it's, it, so it's what I do, so what I do is I've interviewed uh, all the top... Well, not all. Many of the leading cosmologists in the field. We've just done a film with Stephen Hawking. We've worked with Roger Penrose. We've worked with Alan Guth, who invented inflationary cosmology. You talk Stephen Hawking, he's wrong. Um, no. <laughs> you said he was wrong. No. You did. What did I say? You Stephen said Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking admit that they're wrong. My singularity. No, no, no. They no. What, what, okay. The I think. Oh, I think. I think. <laughs> oh, Hawking he's got, he's himself. Yeah. Hawking himself admits the singularity is not true now. He's been saying that for about 30 years. Oh, really? Yeah. He doesn't believe in singularity, Stephen Hawking. Correct. And it's his wow. theorem. They're called Penrose Hawking theorems. I just made a film with him about why what he thinks I'd replaces like the singularity. Like, like if you go on YouTube, search Skydive Film. Okay. Skydive Film, is that you? That's me. And we have a film series called Before the Big Bang. We've made five of these films so far, and there's more on the, on the way. You don't say I don't know a lot, do you? In the films, yeah. <laughs> I don't say we don't know a lot. There, there, there are some times we do say that. It's a fair, it's a fair yeah. point because, no, because I've heard everything about you, Phil. I've yeah. heard Phil's the man. Phil's the okay. man who studied cosmology, and it's fantastic. I'm not an expert in cosmology, not, I've interviewed And I'll be experts. honest with you, I've yeah. not spoken to an atheist who says, don't know just as much as you. I really don't. Okay. Whereas I, I was just probably expecting the yes. answers. I'm sorry, we don't have. <laughs> no, but yeah. here's, here, here, see, yeah. here's, the, here's the thing you see. I'm not asking what. Again, most of my questions have not been what you know. Yeah. It's what you believe me. Well, I. There are statements. Yeah, I know, but there are statements where I just don't have a firm belief. Like you asked me, does the universe infinitely big or finite? I you know, don't have a firm belief uh, because. But you, but you also then stated it doesn't matter whether it's finite or infinite. Depends what you mean by does it matter. Would I mean, it change anything? Probably not. <laughs> really? Well, it might change something. It does change some things. Like, to, it, one of the difficulties in an infinite universe is calculating probabilities. In an infinite universe, everything that's possible is guaranteed to happen. And, and a finite yeah. universe, does it require a cause? Does a fine? I don't think necessarily, no. Really? Because to me, this is my, this is where we were having a conversation. Yeah. To me, when I look at causes, I see that they're things that happen in time. Yeah, you said time existed before yeah. Big Bang. Uh, yes, but if, if the universe is, what do you mean by finite? Do you mean finite in space or finite in time? Finite in time. Okay, if it's finite in time, then there isn't a moment before the Big Bang. So do you believe the universe is finite in time or not? I don't have a belief there. It might be, it might not be. If it is finite in time, and you, because you don't know. Correct. So you, it, possibility it's finite in time. It's possible, it's certainly possible. I certainly if don't it's finite say in time, it couldn't be. If yeah. it's finite in time, yeah. does it require a cause? I don't see that it does, because to me, causality, from what we understand of causality, causes happen before effects. So if there was a first moment of time, right, then um, the notion of causality seems to be a uh, problematic one, shall we say, because it wasn't a before so then for the cause so, to happen so, again. So then your response really should be the universe can't be finite in time because causality can't occur. Um, no, I wouldn't say it can't be finite in time, but if it was finite, it was in, finite time, in time, then I don't say that it must have had some prior cause because the notion of prior... So you're then saying... Uh, ...doesn't have a meaning if it has a beginning. So what you're saying is that if the universe did, is finite in time... ...a reflection in the glass, right? Some photons are going through that glass and some are bouncing off it. But their photons are both all the same. So you can ask the question, what causes... Say that again, sorry. What does that mean? When you, when you, when you look at... Uh, I look at a pane of glass. A pane of glass, you see a reflection in the right. glass. Right. Some photons are going through the glass. Some photons? Yes. Photons from where? From wherever the light source is. Right. The sun, for example. Right. Sun. Wherever the light source is. All right, right, right. right. Some lights. photons are going through the glass. Okay. So some are reflecting back on you. What's causing the photons? Now, that's... What's causing the them? That's not issue. It's not what causing the photons. The issue is what causes one photon to go through the glass and one not to. And as far as we can tell in quantum mechanics, there is no cause for that. But there's cause yeah? for photons, isn't there? Yes, but there isn't a cause for why some go through and some. No, don't. No, there's, no, there's not a reason okay. why. It's not or safe. even. I mean, uh, to be honest, we don't have time to go no, into no, the depths of quantum No, but everything, you've, every example okay. you've used yeah. required a cause. Okay. Photons required the sun. But, but yes, but 
But which one's going through, or which one's... No, that's, that's, a, that's different. That's the reason why no, they're no, going through and why they're not. No, 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 no. It's, OK. Let's what's allowing some to go through and what's There are others. events in quantum mechanics which may not have causes. There are different interpretations, so but we that, don't is know that, for Is sure. that because we don't understand... Exactly, when, we don't when understand you, when you have a, It's not as simple as we just don't understand it. Really? There are... There are reasons to think there are not causes. I'll name something that in quantum okay. mechanics that you can prove doesn't have a cause. I, don't, I can't say... It, I, I'm not going to say <laughs> proves doesn't have a cause, because as I told you... So it could you, have a cause. As I told you, there are different interpretations in quantum no, I appreciate mechanics, that, but and some of them are causal and some you, aren't. Can you name and anything that you believe in quantum mechanics isn't caused by anything? Uh, I'm not going to say that, because I don't know what is the right interpretation of quantum mechanics but it's certainly conceivable and it's certainly reasonable to look at quantum mechanics and so for example Alex Vilenkin is a cosmologist quoted by theists all the time because he said that he had a proof for the universe having been beginning and he says quantum mechanics uh, does not have causes when a radioactive particle decay is not a causal event said again. okay that when a radioactive particle decays or not decays it's not a cause he says that's an uncaused well, I asked him the same now, question what causes decay no but you were using <laughs> a different context because what we say the uncaused moment is not the decay itself it's which particle decays and which <coughs> because only half of them decay yeah, no, and the that, other that, half no, don't. But I say why? And, we, and they're all the same they're all the same no, there's something changing right? there's something there isn't there we just don't know what it is no no of course okay uh, uh, look, look. We're not going to go into all the details of quantum mechanics. We don't have time. All, all, but I, all I would all say all is, all I, hang on. All I want to say is, read up about it, and and, and the, the notion that causality breaks down in quantum. Feel, yeah? yeah, yeah. The notion that causality breaks down in quantum mechanics is is I think a reasonable one. I'm not saying it's definitely right. Mm. So I'm not going to prove sure. things no, 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 don't no, no, have causes no, no, no. because I don't necessarily no, what believe I'm that. Is this. All I'm saying is it's a reasonable thing to suggest, and and it's not something that's uh, fringe or uh, not. No, no, no. I get you, I get you. Go ahead. If I could just ask um, just something that's slightly... Uh, yeah. the, the, we were talking about the photons, yes. what some of them go through and some of them bounce back. Yes. So far, in your understanding, and according to the latest scientific theories, uh, what, what, what are the reasons for this? Have, have you, do you have it's any... It's random. Uh, any, there is no reason. The, 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 these random... Uh, the, yeah. So the, the, there's, a, there's no causes... So it appears to, random. To, ...to them. No, there, it's not just that there appears uh, uh, random. You can do statistical tests on things to, for randomness. And yeah. they pass statistical tests right. for randomness. Right. Oh, okay. and, and that's how you've just so, deemed them to be random. Yeah. Right. Well, that's after yeah. seven. Oh, fuck. I need to get going. Phil, Phil, Listen, Phil, we've Phil. had a very interesting chat. Yeah, sorry, Maybe we we'll talk a bit again. Yeah. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's that's fine. I know. We all get excited. I get like that sometimes too. <laughs> this is how I am. That's fine. <laughs> what, can that I make a quick. That was a good discussion. But I genuinely wanted to. The questions I've asked you. Yeah, no. I'm not one of these people who has tricky questions to make you feel. I genuinely want to hear No, they felt like genuine questions. Because I spoke to atheists so many times. No. And a lot of them talk so bullshit. I want to say, apologise, but so there are lots of atheists But, but I will bullshit. reiterate this. Like, because they're, they're human beings and all human beings But I never bullshit. expected yeah, you to say, don't know so many times. I'm sorry, but we don't know. <laughs> and I agree. Yeah. But when you don't know something, you have no authority to say someone else is wrong about that same thing. That's all I say. I agree. Good man. I agree. Oh, I totally agree pleasure. with that. I'm not saying... Take it. Yeah, yeah, nice to speak to you. Can I just have a look at the YouTube channel? Skydive the The thing that says before the Big Bang. And I... And why can I say just one other thing? What's the debate between theologian William Lane Craig and Sean Carroll? William Lane Craig and Sean Carroll. Google that debate because it's a really interesting debate. William Lane Craig's Christian. He is a Christian, and Sean Carroll is an atheist. But they talk about a lot of these issues, and it's a very it's a very good debate. Yeah. They're both guys are very knowledgeable, but Sean Carroll is a professional cosmologist. Yeah. But I, I, mean, I maintain, if the universe is finite in time. It has a beginning. I agree with that. And I maintain that but everything, I everything we know of that has a beginning is contingent on something for that beginning. But that's only because there's a prime moment in time. And it's only because there's an arrow of time. No, it's because everything that begins has a is Have you seen anything begin that didn't have a prime moment in time? No. Exactly. Not, not within the universe. Not within right? the universe. That would, exactly. that would then indicate that. Exactly. So no, you don't know no, what would, would happen no, if there's no no, prime moment in time. This is that, that, this is that point about there being a... A, a non-limiter on our understanding of other causes. Yeah. So, not saying that everything has a natural explanation. Now, that's a bridge that, that we're not going to cross. That's what we see because that would then deem, if there was a cause of the universe, 
prior to time, then that cause has to be supernatural. Phil, it's been beautiful. All right. Thank you. 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 It's hard to find anyone around here that's not a shouty. Ask the chief of leaders to read the Quran. I have read the Quran. I, I've read <laughs> No, I'm here very rarely, I'm afraid. Uh, Do you want to um, message me on YouTube? Yeah, okay. Have a look at my channel. Send me a message. And it'll be uh, nice to have a good discussion. I think that was really good. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. So that was a really great discussion with uh, Phil. Um, we covered a huge variety of topics going from... Um, we started off talking about the problem of evil and we had a, a, a very interesting discussion about is evil necessary or not and what are the attributes of God that are related to this. And really Phil was using a sort of a really a Christian based argument in that God is all good and all knowledgeable and all powerful and therefore there shouldn't be evil on the earth. And we were sort of explaining that um, free will necessitates there being uh, some sort of uh, moral choices to be made and morality means that there can be some things that are good and some things that are bad that are happening by necessity and they can be resulted even because of that and then also we spoke about looking at the problem of evil in the context of, of time and the fact that the, the time that we have on the earth in the theistic understanding is a very finite period of time and then actually uh, we have a hereafter which is uh, infinite in the the future eternal into the future and therefore in the, co in the context of the overarching period of time this would be a very small insignificant period of suffering if there was any and then we sort of the conversation moved on a little bit we started talking a little bit about science um, quite a good interesting discussion reasons for believing that the, in, in God for example came up and actually just before that we spoke about the, the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him and the fact that the Quran itself is something that the Prophet Muhammad couldn't have produced because he was, himself was illiterate and we looked into the how you approach history and the approach that Phil was taking was really high skepticism about sources that are Islamic simply because they were Islamic whereas actually when you do history I was, the point I was trying to make is that you have to go with the the knowledge and the writings and the recordings of those people to understand that and if you have want to develop a, 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 a contrary idea to their claims of issues then to produce uh, other sources outside of that for for them and then we spoke about science science was a fascinating topic we spoke about uh, we raised many things we talked about the sort of uh, the Kalam cosmological argument uh, we mentioned very briefly consciousness and it's also evolution over a certain period of time that we have to create the diversity that we see now. We didn't, didn't get to cover all of those topics, but um, it's a really interesting discussion. But actually we saw a lot of real uncertainty about what we do know and from, from the atheistic perspective and then not holding any sort of firm positions at all but using that as a basis to then deny other people their own stances. Um, fascinating discussion, I'm sure it will continue. Uh, keep watching. Assalamu alaikum.